when you're ready. Okay, I want to know how many of you have been, or you know somebody who has had cancer or has been affected by cancer. Okay, that's like all of you. So you know how common cancer is now. It's, it's pretty much as common as the cold, but it's not as easy to fix as the cold. You can't just go buy a bottle of NyQuil and go to sleep and wake up all better. So my hero is my best friend, Mom. Her name is Mary Ann, and she has had breast cancer twice. In October of 2001, she was first diagnosed. It was shortly after she had her second daughter, Bree. Um, the cancer spread to her lymph nodes. She went through chemo and radiation. Um, for a while, her routine was get up, get the girls ready, take Kristen to school, take Bree to the sitters, and then she went to her chemo appointment, and then she went to work all day long. Um, she had a couple surgeries to remove the lumps, and about a year after um, she was diagnosed, she was free of the cancer. Six years later, in, or actually seven years later, in December of 2009, the cancer came back and she was diagnosed again. Um, this time it was a lot harder on my best friend Kristen. She, um, because now she was older and she took on a more maternal role and she helped raise her sister. She was working to help her mom with money. And um, I was like, Kristen, come here. So Kristen flew, they're from Philadelphia, so she flew here. Um, she stayed for about a week and we, we just had fun. She got her mind off of everything. And um, her mom was, she was so selfless. She was like, Kristen, go, have fun. Don't worry about me, everything's fine. And then Kristen went back. And three months later, Marianne went in for another surgery to remove lumps. And they ended up doing a double mastectomy, which is where they removed both of your breasts. Um, in the same hospital, say back to back with that surgery, she, they did a reconstructive surgery. And they took tissue from her stomach to rebuild her breast. And um, to do that, they put tubes in her stomach to help with the drainage. And the tubes wouldn't suction. They weren't sang in. Um, she had a pulmonary embolism, which is a blood clot in her lung. And then she had a blood clot in her leg. I flew up there in July of 2009 to visit them. And um, a friend of ours got married, and that's where that picture is from. That's Kristen and Bree and me. And um, because of all the blood clots, she had to take blood thinners, which she took. She had to inject herself with the blood thinners, and her legs were covered in bruises, just huge, massive bruises. It was horrible. And I'm sure she was in so much pain and miserable. She had to wear a wig, and um, she never complained. She was never negative about anything. Um, in fact, Kristen and I would be doing our hair, and she would just grab her wig, brush it, and put it on, and say, okay, why are you guys taking so long? Let's go. And we're like, gosh, Marianne. And, um, you know, she was, just, she was never negative about anything at all. And that's why she's a hero to me. She's selfless. Kristen got to do what she wanted. She she was always positive and upbeat, even though she was going through something horrible. Um, she's she has a sense of humor about it. Kristen and I are not the most endowed with boobs, obviously, <laughs> and so we'll say, you know, we're gonna get boob jobs. We'll get like a two for one special, It'll be awesome. And Marianne's like, well, I already got my boob job and mine was free. <laughs> or like, well, thank you. So that's great. And um, you know, she's just she's always she's made light of the situation, which is nice to see that. You know, in the face of something as serious as that, you can still be positive and you can get through it and you can fight it out. And that's all. <laughs>